I'm Bruce Lynn. I am the senior writer here at TPC. And I'm Ben Cook, and I am the social media manager here at TPC. We're here with Johan Van Zyl. Johan, can you tell us uh, who you are, what you do at TPC, and uh, a little bit of your history as a pro cyclist? Hi, my name is Johan Van Zyl, and I am the supervisor of the catalog team. I've been with the company for a little over two years now. And basically, everything you see on the PDP for the bicycles, all of the specs, the condition, uh, that's, that is what, what my team is responsible for. So a little bit about my cycling career. I started riding a bike when I was seven or eight years old, and it's incredible how uh, just riding a, a, a around the block with your dad can uh, spark this dream of one day wanting to be a professional rider. And especially being South African, it's not a mainstream sport like, like, um, with, like cricket or rugby. So I was really happy and fortunate that I was able to, to pursue my, my career and my dreams. Um, I have to work my way through all of the age group ranks and through all of the categories. I always did well. I was won at the national titles and, and then that kind of automatically put me in, in the right funnels and in the connections with the right teams and national teams and that I started racing abroad from a, a, a very young age and that was really important as a, as a south african because uh, with the sport not being big in south africa i was racing about against 10 to 50 riders where in europe you're racing against 100 to 150 little remcos so that was definitely a a a, a huge um transition for me uh, going from a, a racing in south africa at, uh, to wanting to make it as as a professional rider i spent the majority of my amateur career in spain and that's why I'm really excited about this year's um, Tour de France because they actually start in the Basque Country and it's just around the corner of where I lived in a small little town in a, in a, in a, in a small apartment with sometimes up to eight or, or ten um, other teammates sleeping in bunk beds. So then you quickly grow up and, and you learn how to speak the language, you learn how to cook, you learn how to train. But those are definitely great and formative years as well. Um, and yeah, I race um, all across Spain in the Basque Country and even on the West Coast in uh, Galicia in my first year, I was on an even smaller um, amateur team. And yeah, that's definitely hard years, but so fun now I'm looking back back at it and how I was living as an 18, 19 year old um, on my own uh, in Europe. Um, in 2013, um, there was this, a professional continental team in South Africa called Team Empty in Quebec. And for 2013, they applied for a Pro Continental license. Now, uh, Pro Continental is just one level below a, a World Tour. So that's the second division um, cycling team. And uh, the team actually immediately attracted a lot of attention and a lot of big sponsors because they had this charity linked to it um, Quebec. Um, and Quebec, we, we basically um, handed out bicycles to communities that are underdeveloped um, or that are in a rural Africa or, or in South Africa and, and are there to earn it by planting trees or by recycling. And it's incredible how a bicycle changes the life for them because sometimes they have to walk to school for two hours and now they could ride the bike there for 30 minutes. So it improved their lifestyle, their grades um, and just their, their general well-being. Um, at the time, I was the a double national champion, so that kind of automatically also funneled me in, into the team and it landed me in my first professional contract in 2013 with Team MT in Quebec. Awesome. Um, so you uh, previously mentioned uh, you worked at the Domestique. Can you, uh, I guess, basically explain what a Domestique is or what your role on the team is and like what sort of tasks you do, like in a Grand Tour, for example? So the role of a domestique is kind of to be everywhere and anywhere. I would get bottles for the leaders. I would, I would, I would, I would grab their feed bags. It's a lot of the work that you don't see when, when the racing starts. So if there's a little bit of wind and if the peloton is all stretched out in one line, it is the one rider that sits a little bit off center and not in the slipstream and so that the team leader can be behind him in the wind. Um, so it is these little details which just helps the team leader save a couple of watts here and there that at the end of the day, at the stop end level of the sport makes a huge difference. You really have to do your homework up, up, up before the race to know the wind, uh, the direction of the course, to know exactly where it might be a hot spot. So you have to be in the front. And I was really good at that, at really finding a super nice consistent flow in the peloton and knowing, okay, 
a kilometer 60, 70, or whatever the race situation was, we have to be at the front because there's a pinch point, there's a climb, there's a scary descent, we have already, it, it is going to be windy. Um, and I really enjoyed flowing in the peloton uh, with the team behind me, knowing that I am, I, I am protecting them as much as possible so that they can hopefully get the result at the end of the day. Um, you can have, have the most perfect uh, preparation and the perfect uh, condition at the moment, but because we are 200 riders racing for, for one result, uh, there are so many things that, that, that can influence a result. And it's not easy for the team leader to win the sprint or, or to get a GC result. It can be a flat tire, a mechanical, a crash, or just a bad day. At the end of the day, then you have nothing to show, even though you had a perfect race and you worked really hard and you had a perfect, great day. If there's no team result at the end of the day, then it doesn't look like, then it looks like you didn't necessarily have, have a great day. So that's definitely the downside of being a domestique is that you are super dependent on the team performing well. Otherwise, everything kind of dwindles down and like, but what did you do throughout the year? So, but I, I found it really um, um, satisfying and, and rewarding to work for the team. Um, and that was basically my whole career. I worked as, as a domestic. In, in 2013, I spent the majority of the year and finding my feet in the professional peloton and being on a small continental, um, a small pro continental African team, it definitely was, was, was hard to, to uh, fight for our position. Um, uh, but with the attention of the charity, we, we, uh, we signed big riders like Angelo Ciolek. And I don't know if, if you remember, uh, but in 2013, uh, the team actually won in San Remo, which was a crazy day, a lot of snow. And you can just imagine for a small pro continental team winning one of the biggest monuments in the world, how much that meant. And things kind of snowballed there. Next year, we signed even bigger riders, even bigger sponsors. Um, and ultimately, it, it, it led to the team growing so much where we signed Steve Cummings, Ebot Bosnagen, like the whole CAV group with Bernie. Um, and me, I'm growing up and also um, I used to watch these, these riders on television dreaming of one day doing what they're doing. And, and also like now being teammates with them was just an absolute dream, dream come true to be able to learn from them, race with them. Um, and just to have their knowledge was really incredible.